Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. Today we're going to talk about a specific aspect of the k-means algorithm, which is the random initialization trap. So let's have a look at this phenomenon and see what it's all about. So random initialization trap. So here we've got a uh, scatter plot again with uh, two variables. So we've got the x and y coordinates. And in this case, let's say we're going to choose uh, three clusters. So right away, you kind of kind of tell which is uh, the final result. What is the final result going to look like if we choose three clusters? It does look like uh, you can pretty easily spot them here. But let's nevertheless form this operation, this algorithm. And if we initialize our centroids like this, then what we'll get is because we already kind of can tell that probably that's a cluster, that's a cluster, and that's a cluster. So just to make the algorithm a bit faster, so we don't have to do too many easy steps and iterations, we're going to uh, select our centroids like this. And right away, if we perform the algorithm, we'll get these clusters. And next is even if we move around the centroids, so we find the centroids of each of these clusters, nothing's going to change. So you can, in your own time, you can perform the steps that we learned about in the previous tutorial and see that nothing will indeed change because of the way we selected the centroids. This is already the final result. So those are the, going to be the clusters that we're going to end up with. So that's kind of the end result of the k-means algorithm because we selected the clusters, the centroids in the places where we did. Now, the question is, what if we select the centroids in different locations? Will we be able to change the result? Will the result be different? And of course, an algorithm has to be, what we want from this algorithm is for it to give us a deterministic result because we can select the centroids at random and therefore we don't want that selection of centroids to affect how the clustering is going to happen. But let's have a look and see what happens. So what will happen if we had a bad random initialization? So bad uh, is like a term we're going to use loosely for now, but you will see why we're using bad random initialization just now. So again, we're going to go through these steps that we discussed in the previous tutorial. We're going to choose the number of clusters, which is three. We'll select at random three points, which will be our centroids. We'll assign each data point to the closest centroid that will form K clusters. We'll compute and place the new centroid for each cluster, thinking in terms of center of mass or center of gravity. And step five, we'll reassign each data point to the new closest centroid. If any reassignment took place, we'll return to step four. Otherwise, we'll go to the end because the model has converged. So these are the steps we discussed previously. Let's have a look at them in action. All right, so three clusters. And this time, instead of selecting the centroids here, here, and here, what we're going to do is we're going to select them differently. We're going to select the centroids like this. So we'll put one centroid here on this side, one centroid here and one centroid here. So let's have a look what happens now. If we draw a line, so this time we have three clusters, three centroids, but the principle is kind of the same. We still have a point which is equidistant from all three of them. So this point over here is the same distance from all three. And then this line is equidistant from these two, this line is equidistant from these two, this line is equidistant from these two. Again, this is not part of the algorithm. As part of the algorithm, you would just take each individual point, you look at this point, and you would see which centroid is the closest. So the same is green, you'd color it green. This one, you check again, you'd color it green. This one, you check again, color it green, and so on. Then this one is the closest to red, you'd color it red and so on. But just to make things easier for ourselves, we're going to use this little hack. We're going to use these lines to say anything in this part of the chart is going to be closest to red, just because the, these are equidistant lines. Anything in this part of the chart is going to be green. Anything in this part of the chart is going to be blue. It'll just save us time. So based on the, this method, we can tell right away that this is the red uh, cluster for now. This is the blue, this is the green. So now we're going to, we've assigned each data point to the closest centroid, that's great. Now we're going to move on to step four and we're going to move these clusters. So we're going to recalculate, compute and place the new centroids for each cluster. So there we can see that that is probably the center of mass for the red uh, points, that's the one for blue points, that's the one for green points. So we move our centroids to the new locations and now we're going to perform uh, step five, we're going to reassign each data point to the new closest centroid. So again, we're going to use that quick hack with the lines. Let's see how the lines will look like this time. There's our new equidistant point, and these are the equidistant lines. So this time you can see that nothing will change. Uh, the red points are all already in the red 
corner blue points are in the blue corner green points are, are in the green corner so nothing is going to change there will be no reassignment so we don't go to step four we instead go to finalizing the algorithm because it has converged so there we go that is our model it is ready and as a result we have these three clusters now these three clusters are different to what we saw at the start so let's have a look this is what we saw at the start we're going to call them the true three clusters because you can tell just from the chart you can tell that these points would most likely to form a cluster these would form a cluster and these would form a cluster just by looking at it you can intuitively tell that that is the case this is what we got in the first at the start of the tutorial and this is what we got now so you can see that the three clusters are different and therefore what we have is a situation or a phenomenon where the selection of the centroids at the very start of the algorithm can potentially dictate the outcome of the algorithm and that's not a good thing because the centroids are selected at random so how do you combat this how do you battle this well the answer is uh, actually not as straightforward there is a addition or a modification to the k-means algorithm that allows you to correctly select the centroids and the solution here is the k-means plus plus algorithm now at the same time i wanted to mention that we're not actually going to delve deeply into the k-means plus plus algorithm and how it's structured uh, you can definitely read up more about it on wikipedia or other sources it is quite a involved approach in how that selection occurs but the good news is that all of this happens in the background so the k means plus plus happens either in r or python or whatever tool you're using you don't need to actually implement it so it's just a good idea to be aware of this issue that there's a true cluster result that you're after and there can be some false or some non-desirable clustering results or clustering outcomes of the k-mean clustering algorithm uh, it's good to be aware of that issue and it's also good to know that the tools that you use will be or make sure that the tools you're using are going to be implementing that specific selection of the random centroids at the very start so that you get the good result so definitely if you are more interested interested to learn more about the k-means plus plus algorithm definitely read up about it but otherwise it's not something that you really have to worry about it's just something that you need to keep in mind and uh, make sure or be confident that the tools you're using are bypassing this uh, initialization trap so hopefully you enjoyed today's tutorial and i look forward to seeing you next time until then enjoy machine learning